What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we're here with my 2023 Tesla Model Y and I'm gonna be telling you 10 things that I like and 10 things that have room for improvement. Like I said, this is my 2023 Tesla Model Y. I have Steck Dino Prism on the paint. It's deep blue metallic from the factory. These are some aftermarket wheel caps. Um, but just giving you a quick walk around, this is the base Model Y all-wheel drive with the 4680 battery pack. Uh, and I have almost 9,000 miles on it, and I've had it just about two months. So definitely have been piling on the miles, uh, taking it all the way up to Minnesota, all the way down to Florida. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. So definitely uh, gotten some good experience with it. But it is blazing hot outside, so let's head inside and I'm going to tell you and walk you through some of the things that I like and some of the things that I don't like, 10 of each specifically. So why don't we dive right in. We're going to start with the things that I like. Uh, and if you haven't already, I'd recommend uh, checking out the rest of the videos on my channel. I've been making quite a bit of content about this Model Y. Uh, and if you enjoy this, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'd certainly like to see you on future videos. But we'll start with the likes. Uh, first one, pretty darn obvious. I like having access to the supercharger network. Uh, pretty soon this is not going to be exclusive to Tesla's and this is certainly not exclusive to the Model Y specifically, uh, but it's pretty great being able to hop into my Model Y, just punch into the navigation anywhere I want to go basically, uh, and it tells you where to go or where to stop for charging, how long to stop for charging, uh, and there's chargers just everywhere and they work perfectly every single time. Um, obviously someone's going to comment that they it's not a hundred percent, but it's pretty darn close. Um, that's number one. And these are not in any particular order. These are more in just the order of my thoughts, uh, which is not necessarily a ranking of importance. Number two, API apps. So things like Teslafy, Tessie, Teslab, uh, Teslamate, all those sorts of app services that tie into your Tesla login uh, and can log different things from the API, I find super valuable. Uh, I love having all my different charges logged, all my drives logged, the efficiency, uh, the different places I go. Um, maybe I'm just a data nerd, but I really like having all of that data just available because it's nice being able to look back and say, two months ago I charged at whatever supercharger and I wanna see how well it performed. Or two months ago I did this drive and I wanna see what the efficiency was compared to doing the same drive today. Uh, I don't know of really any other vehicles that you can do that on. There is now Electrify, which is Teslify, but for non-Teslas uh, by the same people. And that's available for Rivians now. I uh, really wish that had been around when I had my Rivian, but such is life. So that's something that's mostly on Teslas right now, but I find a ton of value. And I really like the third-party developer support based on that Tesla API, whether it's official or not really. Um, they seem to be rolling it out in a more official manner now, uh, but it's still kind of just using your token and kind of unofficial reverse engineered APIs. So uh, I find it very valuable. Number three, similar vein to the Tesla APIs is actually Tesla accessories. Uh, so the Model 3 and Model Y are so dang popular and they are everywhere. Uh, and as a result, there's been a lot of companies that have made accessories for them. Um, basically, if there's something that you think the Model 3 and Model Y needs, there's probably a good chance that someone's made it because someone else has probably thought of the same thing. Uh, there's just so many accessories on the market for these. And some of them have questionable utility and styling, but for the most part, there's a lot of very good uh, accessories on the market. Uh, and definitely subscribe if you haven't because I'm gonna be making a full accessories recommendation guide. Uh, I'm just waiting for a few more things to show up in the mail so that I can actually show them to you before I make that video. Next up, infotainment, so the 15-inch uh, touchscreen. Uh, everything on it just works extremely well. Uh, you can use it for navigation, as I mentioned. It has Spotify built in, it has the dash cam, it has the cameras that you can pull up at any time, it has your efficiency, uh, climate control, just all the things. It's constantly updated, it works extremely well. Uh, it's super responsive, especially on the new cars that have the AMD Ryzen processor instead of the older Intel Atom, but even those are still pretty darn good. Uh, autopilot, number six. It just, it works really well. Uh, I have the new hardware four system with the new cameras and I really like it. Very little phantom braking, but every once in a while I do still have that. This is entirely based on Tesla Vision, which I think is a little bit questionable. We'll get into that in the dislikes in a moment. 
but overall, really enjoy autopilot, being able to put it on on unmapped roads or basically anywhere with lane lines. Uh, I, I really like autopilot. It's great on the interstate. Number five, the sound system. It actually rocks. Uh, I don't know how many speakers are in the latest Teslas, but plenty. It has a subwoofer. Uh, the sound stage is just really good. Uh, and it, I don't know what it is about Tesla sound systems, but there just seems to be something kind of special about them that sounds really, really good. Number seven, we have the Tesla app. So I'm talking about the mobile app uh, on your phone. Uh, it serves as your phone key, uh, which actually is another item on this list, but you can control the climate control. You can view the cameras on the exterior of the car remotely. Uh, you can view your charging history. Uh, it just, it's awesome. It's kind of the benchmark for mobile phone apps. That's not to say there's not room for improvement. I wish it would show charge curves. Uh, I wish it would show more charging history. Uh, and there's definitely some things that Tesla can still add, but the app as it is today is really good. Uh, number eight, everyday livability. So it's little things like having your phone as your key, which is actually number nine. Uh, being able to just hop in, put your foot on the brake, put it in drive and go. Uh, not having a start button, uh, having the infotainment navigation already predict where you're going based on home or uh, work. That actually works pretty darn well. Uh, having your Spotify resume. It just is a great car to hop in and just run errands. You can leave the climate control on when you're away from it. So that way you're not getting into a hot car. You can turn on the climate control from the app before you get in it. So you're not getting in a hot car or a cold car, depending on what time of year it is, but it's hot out today. So that's what's on my mind. Uh, but it's just a great daily driver, super practical, love the hatchback, the front trunk, uh, ease of getting in and out, comfortable seats. It's just a great overall package to live with every day. Number nine, phone key. Um, my last three vehicles now have had phone keys, so the Polestar 2, the Rivian, and now the Model Y. Uh, and I don't know if I could go back to having or being required to use a physical key again or key fob. It just it's so nice having my phone as my key and not ever having to think about whether I have my key fob with me or not, uh, or that I have to carry yet another thing in my pocket. I already carry enough things in my pockets that I don't want a key fob also. And number 10, uh, which arguably should be number one, but again, these are not necessarily in order, value. So this base Model Y starts at just over $47,000, qualifies for the $7,500 federal tax credit, uh, which puts it at about $40,000 net of the tax credit. And I just think that's a fantastic value. I do think that you should get the long range unless you're gonna be doing a lot of just kind of city driving, everyday driving. But if you're planning on taking quite a few road trips, definitely get the long range. I think it's just under $3,000 more. Uh, and I think that's a the move to do. There's also inventory cars. Uh, if you're not aware that are discounted, even though they're new, they're just at Tesla service centers or delivery centers. And also with the Tesla referral, my link is down below, by the way, you can get right now $500 off and three months of full self driving for free with a referral or on Model S or X, you can actually get a thousand dollars off plus the three months of FSD. So definitely if you're in the market for a new Model Y or any Tesla, link down below for my referral. Uh, and I certainly appreciate it if you use mine, especially if you find my videos valuable uh, in your buying search. So those are the top 10 things that I liked about the Tesla Model Y. And a lot of these are applicable to Teslas as a whole, um, but I'm just evaluating it based on my perspective with this base Model Y. And now that we've talked about things that I like about the Tesla Model Y, it's time to get into things that I dislike or things that I think Tesla could improve on the Model Y or just Teslas as a whole. Some of these are specific to my Model Y all wheel drive specifically, uh, and some of them apply to Teslas as a whole. So number one, again, these are not in order. There's no cooled or ventilated seats on the Model 3 or Model Y. Um, maybe this is just front of mind because it's blazing hot here in Charlotte and seemingly across the country, but I really think that a car that's about $50,000 should probably have ventilated seats in 2023. Uh, you can get ventilated seats on base model Hyundais, but base model Teslas don't have it. So uh, I think Tesla could improve. Model S and X do have it, but Model 3 and Y should have it as well, in my opinion. So room for improvement there. Number two, this one is specific to the Model Y all-wheel drive with the 4680 battery pack. And I do have a whole video about this uh, that I posted recently, but the charging curve on this car in particular is not very good. And what that means, if you're not super familiar with EVs, is that 
at, while it does peak at 230 kilowatts, which I've yet to see, I've only seen a peak of 223 kilowatts, it drops off dramatically as it starts to charge. So it really slows down. And as a result, uh, it doesn't have the best charging. So you're gonna be spending longer at superchargers or other DC fast chargers than you would with other vehicles or other Tesla uh, Model 3 or Model Y specifically. So I think there's a huge opportunity for improvement there from Tesla uh, and they can do that with a software update. So it's not that this is permanent, this is just applicable for right now. Uh, and definitely uh, subscribe because I'll make videos as Tesla improves this, hopefully they do, for my sake if nothing else. Um, but definitely room for improvement there. Number three, there are no 120 volt or 240 volt outlets for that matter uh, anywhere on this vehicle. You only have the 12 volt, which are actually about 15 volts on this with the lithium uh, low voltage battery. So there's no way that you can plug in something like, uh, I don't know, a blow dryer or a coffee pot or, or even like your laptop. You have to use USB-C for that but there's basically no household outlet for powering whatever things you might want to bring on a road trip or just want to power, whether that's a vacuum to vacuum your car in your garage um, or something for car camping. I just think in 2023, an electric vehicle, it has a huge battery. It should have a way that you can use that with a normal wall outlet uh, at a very minimum on the inside and maybe on the outside as well. Uh, you can do it Kia Hyundai style with the charge port adapter, but. I uh, definitely think Tesla is a bit behind in that regard because no current Tesla shipping has that. Hopefully the Cybertruck has it. Uh, trucks definitely have to have that in the bed. But Model 3, Model Y, Model SX, none of them have a standard AC outlet that you can use to power accessories. Number four, uh, Tesla Vision. I mentioned this in the likes. Uh, Tesla Vision is kind of a joke. Uh, it works pretty well for autopilot, for the base autopilot, for keeping you in your lane, uh, adjusting distance, things like that. But it's been out for, I think, almost two years now at this point. Uh, and it still has a maximum speed limit of 85 miles an hour, which is up from when they first came out with it of 80. So they did improve there, but it's still behind earlier autopilot uh, with radar that can do 90 miles per hour, or even Tesla's original autopilot AP1 that had a single camera behind the mirror and radar that could do 90 miles per hour. That's on the early cars using mobile eye uh, tech. But Tesla definitely needs to improve on that because that's just unacceptable. There's still no FSD beta on hardware four, uh, which is what my latest Model Y has. Uh, there's also no summon. So you can't use that functionality of the full self-driving package. You're still paying the same price, but you're just getting less functionality. Uh, and that's a result of no ultrasonic sensors. Uh, which leads into park assist with no ultrasonic sensors is completely useless. Uh, occasionally it's right, but it's so often wrong that you can't trust it even in the chance that it is right. I don't know why Tesla feels the need to constantly reinvent the wheel uh, on things that are solved and have been solved for years, but ultrasonic sensors, they work. So please put them back. Uh, same goes for rain sensors, the wipers, they're, they've gotten better than they have been in the past with uh, Tesla Vision, but you can put a rain sensor that every car has been using for many, many years. Hell, my 2001 BMW 3 Series had better auto wipers than this 2023 Tesla Model Y. That's just sad. Number five, there is no rear cross traffic alert, uh, which is something that pretty much every vehicle with kind of a safety suite of sorts has in 2023. So there's no radars or anything. So if you're backing out of a spot and there's someone approaching from the side, uh, you're not gonna get an alert of that because the vehicle has no idea. So definitely something that Tesla should have, especially if they like to make the claims of being the safest vehicles on the road. Uh, number six, there's a lack of customization on the infotainment system uh, because things like uh, your uh, recent, or not recent, your suggested destinations in the navigation system uh, they're kind of useless and I wish I could turn that off. Uh, I also wish I could customize the route planning a bit more that to prioritize version three superchargers or arrive with a lower state of charge or tell it that I want to arrive with a higher state of charge to my final destination. Um, just kind of power user improvements that I think Tesla could make to the infotainment system. Number seven, uh, the energy dis or the energy use shown on the trip meters is a bit deceptive. 
Uh, so it doesn't include any energy that's used when the vehicle is not in drive or reverse, I suppose, uh, but primarily in drive. So any of the use that's shown, or that's any of the energy that's used when the vehicle is parked uh, is not counted into those official efficiency numbers. So in my opinion, it makes them artificially low. Uh, and for comparison, my Rivian had trip meters and it would actually count all of the energy used since the reset, including when the vehicle was parked. So if you left the climate control on while it was parked, it would count that energy into the trip. And I think that's the right way to do it or it should at least be a toggle. Uh, number eight, kind of related to the slightly deceptive displaying of energy use, good luck getting rated range in Tesla. Sure, you can drive 60 miles an hour uh, in 65 degree temperature on a perfectly flat road, and yes, you'll get rated range in those conditions. But if you look at tests like uh, Kyle Connor's test from out of spec or the inside EVs test, which Kyle and Tom do uh, at 70 miles per hour, many vehicles exceed their EPA rated range uh, on that test, whereas Tesla's, it's a pattern, they fall short. And I realize that the EPA test is not representative of that use case. However, when other vehicles are exceeding their EPA range on that test and Tesla's are falling short, that leads to a lack of trust for the EPA ratings from consumers. Uh, and I think that's a bit deceptive. And I understand Tesla's using the system to their advantage. I would too if I were them but it still doesn't lead to the best experience for Tesla drivers. Number nine, uh, I think Tesla should include a hotspot in 2023. Chevys and GMs have had this for many years with OnStar, uh, but I'd love a way that I could use the built-in cellular on the Tesla to have a hotspot to my iPad, to my computer, or whatever. If I'm working from the car, if you have kids in the back seat, any of those things, I think it's very useful to have a hotspot. I really love that on my Rivian. And number 10, the front trunk is manual on every Tesla still in 2023, including their nearly $100,000 Model S and Model X. Uh, and I think Tesla just needs to up their game on that. Lucids and Rivians have power front trunks. Uh, and I'm not necessarily sure that base model three and Y need a power trunk or power front trunk, but I think it should at least be an option or an official accessory from Tesla that you can pay extra for uh, because the aftermarket options are junk. Uh, and I'd really like to have that feature, but I don't want to have to resort to those junk aftermarket options. Uh, and having that either from the factory or a Tesla official accessory would be really great. And those are the things that I dislike about my Tesla or things that I think that Tesla could improve on this base model all wheel drive. Well, hopefully you guys found this video useful about the 10 things that I like and dislike about my 2023 Tesla Model Y. I'd love to hear from you guys down below, whether you agree with these, if you have things to add, uh, whether you think I'm completely off base. Uh, but I also wanted to mention, I do have a full one month review uh, and quite a few of these things overlap with the things I covered in that review. Uh, however, in that review, it's a bit longer. I went a bit more in depth. So if you wanna hear a bit more context on some of the things I mentioned, I'd recommend checking out that video. Uh, and again, if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you guys for watching.